Welcome back Hexmaniacs. Today I'm going to show you two ways to connect a generator <laughs> up to your house for backup power for emergencies. One way could kill someone and the other way is of course the safe and proper way. So choose wisely. We live somewhere where we have the occasional hurricane, the more than occasional windstorm, and even just a thunderstorm that can knock down limbs off of any one of the billions of trees around us and put out power for a while. So a couple years ago, I decided we need a backup generator. I got a quote on an integrated system for the house. And after getting that, I decided what we needed was a portable generator because mm -hmm. those prices are insane for the integrated ones. And a lot of that cost is actually the installation, which just kind of doesn't make sense to me. Now I did a video a couple years ago showing how we set our system up. And I didn't want to do this myself. I wanted to make sure I did it right. So I actually hired an electrician to set it up for us after I found the cheap generator that we were going to use. And a lot of people attacked me in the comments saying, oh, you're going to kill someone trying to be cheap. I was trying to be cheap on the generator, not cheap on the connection. That's why I hired an electrician. When the electricians came out, they installed this power inlet box for a 50 amp cable. This is where you plug the cable running from the generator in so it can deliver power to the house. What he should have installed next was an interlock kit, but he didn't. What I have to do right now to make this work safely is I have to flip the breaker to the main house off and then I flip the breaker for the generator on. If I were to forget to do that or let's say we sold the house and somebody else moved in and they weren't aware how this worked and you forgot to turn that main breaker off, the generator can back feed power and if there's a lineman working on the power lines after an outage, it could actually shock or worse kill him. So I'm going to install that interlock kit on today. In order to make that interlock work, I have to move this breaker right here, which is actually for the well down here, and move the breaker for the generator up to the top. It's frustrating that the electrician didn't do it correctly to begin with. That's why I paid a professional to do it. And after many calls, I haven't been able to get another electrician to come out here, so I'm gonna have to do it myself. Oh, <laughs> That was not funny. That was not funny. You did not tell me that was going to happen. <laughs> So he was just looking for some place that was warm and dry. I think he found it. Yeah, that one's longer. Yep, all right. Here we go. With the breakers moved, it's time to drill in to the front of the panel box and make sure you take it off of the box to do this or I think you'll be shocked at uh, what could happen. Get that, get that shot. Go ahead and get. Yeah, let me let me finish it. All right. All right. <clears throat> now that I've got it in, let me show you how this is going to work. Come on in closer. I can flip the generator breaker on, and you can see that the main breaker is off. So I can cut the generator off. This slides down, and then I can cut the main breaker on. With the main breaker on, I cannot cut the generator on. So. Anybody working on the power lines is totally safe. Well, at least safe for me, I should say. We're actually working on a bunch of electrical out here. So before I test the generator, I've got to do some other connections in here. But as far as you're concerned, let's go test the generator. The generator that I'm going to connect is this Duramax XP9000. It's a 9000 watt inverter generator. The original generator that I hooked, had hooked up was a 13,000 watt, but it wasn't an inverter generator. And honestly, I don't know what the real risk is of like dirty power coming through a traditional generator into, into your house with like sensitive electronics. I guess you get like power surges and everything that could potentially harm your electronics. That doesn't happen with an inverter generator because it puts out pure sine wave energy. We'll see how well it works. I, I honestly don't know if this one's going to be big enough to power the house, but you know, we're going to give it our best shot. One of the reasons I went with this one was because it was also dual fuel. The original one that I used was also dual fuel, but dual fuel, <laughs> but I put 
ethanol gas in it and I let it set. You shouldn't let any gas set in anything for a long period of time, but especially not ethanol. So that had to be fixed and I don't wanna, I don't wanna even deal with that anymore. This one's never gonna have a drop of gas put in it. This one is gonna run off of propane because we happen to have a buried propane tank and uh, the outlet on the other side. So that's gonna run cleaner and everything. One of the other reasons why I bought this one was because if it's not powerful enough, I can run these in parallel if I wanted to get a second one. That I have to connect the battery. All right, well, it's starting to get kind of gloomy out and thunder, so let's go see if this thing will actually work. Tempted to put bigger tires on here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my propane line. Bobber. I noticed a little bit of a gas smell from right here to this connection. So I'm gonna put a little soapy water on that and see what happens. And you see that there is definitely a slow leak right there. Try it again. PG got gas for LPG. We'll pick LPG. Fuel to run. Low idle. Off. Breakers are off. Start button. Come on now. Oh, you know what? It'd help if I turn the gas on. <laughs> yeah, there we go, there we go. We know that runs. Next step, come over here to the box. Join me, join me at the box, won't you? I'm gonna cut the main outlet off. There we go. Now I can raise the inner lock up. And now power is allowed to travel through here and up into the panel. Let's get this going again. All right, now I'm gonna connect it to the house first. I'll plug it in here. Okay, what I did there was I turned the breakers on and now it's delivering power. The load right now, 3,800 watts. Approximately, it jumped to like 5.2 a second ago. All right, let's go see what the inside of the house looks like. One thing that kind of makes it unique for us is that my mom's part of the house is like wired up separately. So it makes it real easy to power her smaller house, even though it's part of our house. So that simplifies this process for us a little bit. Secondly, if you know you want to be careful connecting all this stuff up, luckily I had a stunt nephew that did it for me. All right, let's see. Oh, adjust, adjust. All right, let's see. The lights are on. Refrigerator's on. Stove's on. We don't even have any flicker in the lights. And perhaps most importantly, the air will probably take just a second to come on. Let's see if that works. Any second now. I'd actually like to see what the 
wattages when this thing cuts on. It always takes a few minutes. Any minute. Any minute now. Oh yes, oh yes, of course, of course. That's, yeah, all right. Now it cuts on, how long, I, how long did I sit here for? 10 minutes waiting for that thing to cut on? I walk off for 30 seconds and it cuts on. Just for reference, this is a three and a half ton unit right here. Now I'm curious to see how many watts it's pulling. All right, we can cut that off. Now, to get everything back to normal, I'm just going to switch that breaker off. And then I can turn the main breaker on for the house. Everything's back on. Did you know that like something as simple as a solar flare could cause the power to go out? And in fact, it would just probably make this generator useless. But if you watch this video right here, I'll show you some ways that you can be prepared for that. So, you know, you don't die. See you next time.